Welcome back to Scar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We got Brian Falconer, co-host extraordinaire. How you doing today, bro? Dude, I'm doing good. Doing good, man. You Are you comfortable <laughs> with that title? No. Nope. Because I love that title. Why? Co-host extraordinaire. No, no why? Because no other talk show has a co-host extraordinaire. But do you know what that... <laughs> That puts out there and what somebody has to, cause I'm not gonna maintain it. I'm gonna let everybody know I am nowhere near extraordinary at all. <laughs> I'm running a meal as can be. You're like, I don't want to put that pressure <laughs> on, on myself. Me, right? Nah, bro. Uh-uh. Hey, I can understand Ain't that. Happening. Ain't so happening. how's your week been, man? Phenomenal. Awesome. Phenomenal. Mine sucked. I was sick. <laughs> okay. But you know. I'm, I'm over it. It's, it's finally the weekend, but man, dude, I hate being sick in the summer. <sighs> Nothing's worse. <laughs> okay. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> right. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> Nothing's worse. Nothing's worse. <laughs> Nothing's so, worse. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is part three uh, of part four, uh, or, or four part series of the top 100 must try cigars. And we've had a lot of fun. With this topic, yes, we have. we've talked about a lot of great sticks, most of which I've smoked, but there's some on the this list that I have not smoked, and I'm like looking yes. for that smoke. So, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, now, here's what I'm planning on doing. Okay. On the last show, on the YouTube video, in the show notes, or like the last screen, I'll have it pause, and we'll have a list of all the cigars that made this list. Okay. That's good. Because that gives everybody an opportunity to, to actually, well, what did he say for number such and such? No, you can see it right there. And if you want to try it, you know which one you're going to pick. Right. I got I agree. you, bro. That's good. I thought it'd be cool to do that. I well, I had some people, people ask me, it's like, hey, what did you have on this show? Or what, mm-hmm. what cigars? And I was like, just wait till the last one. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. I got you. Just wait. And you, and you know, sometimes. So, hey, it's anyway, that memory goes sometimes. <laughs> this, what we're smoking tonight oh, yes. is on the top 100 oh, yes. must tries. Because this is a new cigar for me. Mm. I smoked it not long ago and I saved one for you, which is incredible. I think you would admit. True. The fact that I saved that smoke for you is impressive. Impressive. It is because I am smoking it now, <laughs> and the way this thing tastes, there's no way I can believe you smoked one already, right? And left one for me, even though you're still smoking another one. But I'm like, this is a good I, stick. I, I could have smoked all three, three hey, no I'm, problem. I, I, please believe me, I am not trying to throw that out there like that. I'm just amazed how good the stick is, and that you 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 gifted me with this, and I appreciate it, bro. And this is a new cigar for me. me I've never too. smoked it before. I, I've heard about it, but I've heard reviews. I came about across it. this, and I was like, you know what? I want to try it, and it is the uh, Davidoff Escuro. And let me tell you what, man, it's the Grand Perfecto, and that thing is a beaut. I mean, it's just a beaut. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. when you look at the roll. It's like, because that's a craftsmanship yeah, right there. Yeah. They took their time with that. As they say, they took their time with that. Those hands were man- magnificent on this one. <laughs> this was the true Torcedores. Yes. Did you know? Now, I don't know. You know what? Talk Watch about the it. interview in the middle of the show, and uh-huh. you'll learn all about that. We, Me and Tim talked about that. And so, just so you guys know, this is part three of four on the top must-try 100 cigars. But... Our uh, guest this week is the Tim Swanson of Cigar Daily. Yes. Now, I'm a fan of that guy. I am. I have been for a long time. And, you know. I like Cigar Daily. Yeah. And he's, you know what I like about him is, one, with him, what you see is what you get. And And that's, that's how we aspire to, to be, be every because day. we don't know how to do anything other than it's too that hard for me it's yeah. too hard i can only be me because uh, and that's hard too it does <laughs> she's like oh brian come on man come on but to do to be you especially today yeah especially today just this is me this is what you got you don't like it take it or leave it you ain't gotta listen right <laughs> sorry no. oh oh man hang on a minute all right so anyway uh 
I'm loving this cigar, and I just got it lit. And let me tell you what, the first one I experienced, the burn was nice. It is now, man. This, it's, this baby's starting off nice. Burn, taste. I mean, just looking at it, it's this is a nice, nicely crafted stick. You retro man. held it yet? Yes. Nice, medium, medium smooth. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I was getting ready to say. A little chocolatey in there, a little nutty in there. Maybe even a little pecanish, or is that like an almond? I mean, toasted, and it's like I don't normally like pick out certain, you know, Nuts. flavor profiles yeah. like that. But on this one, it's like it's speaking to me. It is speaking to me. There are going to be people that listen to this one, and they're going to hear something that was said. And I want those that heard what was said. <laughs> To comment on it. Because <laughs> I missed it, you apparently. You missed it. A, it went a million hey, miles hey, from hey, hey, It right. probably came from me. Nope. No? came from me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but we're going to leave that alone. All right. If <laughs> Those you heard... that pick it up, comment on it. Comment on it. <laughs> hey, and also, it. you guys, you know, we've started doing something new mm-hmm. on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. While, we're, while you're watching, I'm throwing like pictures of cigars people were talking about Mm -hmm. random stuff and so i'm trying to make the youtube channel better every week but if you're not subscribing make sure you like subscribe subscribe and like and leave a comment even if it's like a really mean nasty comment we don't care (laughs) we think that's funny because we're gonna look at it like yeah really all right (laughs) right we ha- so one of us will have something to say. Usually, my compadre there, but I always things. answer when oh, people yeah, post stuff. Know. I always answer. I try to stay above it, but <laughs> <laughs> above it, I'm nice. I'm very nice. You know, I catch stuff, catch shadows walking across certain things. I'm looking like, okay, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about the door. It was just a shadow went across there. Okay. Just like earlier when when Larry six nine all six nine of them bust in on us, we we were ready. To, <laughs> he was getting ready to get a beat down for real. He was like, "Oh, that's Larry." Where's your pistola? Uh, don't worry about that. Okay, <laughs> well, I was gonna say I've never seen you like, yeah, checking the door because I mean it's catching me out my eyes. Something's going. Where's the dog? You said you got rid of it. Didn't you? I got rid of it. Oh, so man. for you guys that don't know, my daughter brought home a English bulldog. Yeah. Some of the Patreons seen it on a herf mm-hmm. and uh dude he was a runner i mean <laughs> but the thing is those that saw him and saw his physique <laughs> to label him a runner <laughs> right he doesn't look no, like a runner he no. looks like a brute yeah he does he look like he just sit there and just walk up on people and beat them up yeah <laughs> but, but he said he's like, a runner. <laughs> like he, first he figured out how to open the gate just pull the string. Wow. Yeah. So he was smart. Because I came, I came back here one day and I was like, why is the gate open? And I was like, where's that dog? <laughs> and sure enough, he was out. And I was like, surely he didn't do that. Uh, and then one day, I left him in the backyard and I watched him. He and he you. went right over there and opened the gate. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> He's smart. So, so I gotta go get him. <laughs> so then I had, that's why we got the whole. Entering the castle, castle, yeah. Gatekeeper, you know, yeah. All these latches. So anyway, long story short, too late. But my daughter found that dog a home, Uh and they love it. And I'm like, thank God. I don't need another pet. You know, I got Ferb. Ferb. He's 12 years old. He's 10 years old. I figure he's got four more good years, and then pet free. Dude, I am looking forward you, to being pet free. You had I got two kids. What was, what I'm was, still looking to be kid free. What was that pig's name on Green Acres? Wilbur. Wilbur. He used to have Wilbur here. <laughs> <laughs> you had Ferb. You had, what? What did they name that? We had dog? two pigs. Oh, you did have two pigs. Yeah, the dog's original name was Sweets, but I think they renamed him like Geronimo. Is he a runner? <laughs> Can't find him. <laughs> Still searching for him. <laughs> Send Custer. <laughs> All right. Didn't see that turn coming. Anyway, now, hey, you don't want to put a cartoon of Custard, Custard. and Geronimo. <laughs> see him chasing him, trying to catch him. So, Not finding him. 
Anyway, good, guys, uh, before we dive into the show, let's talk about our sponsor. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> whack up, whack up. He said, whack up, whack up, whack up. I got one thing. We are uh-uh. drinking oh, yes. a new bourbon. Oh, and yes. here's the thing. I went down to a couple of liquor stores today. First one, there was nothing in there that we either haven't had a lot of or I wasn't interested in. Gotcha. So then I went to another liquor store. Same deal. Same deal. Then I went to another liquor store, and it was worse than the first two. Hold up. Hold up. Hold on. <laughs> let me finish here. So I'm standing in this aisle with maybe, I don't know, 15 different bourbons. That's it. <laughs> and I'm looking at these, and I mean, not counting the regular, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And so anyway, I'm looking, and I see this bottle of Old Tub, and I'm like, You know what? That sounds like garbage, (laughs) but I've never had it before, and it says bottled and bond, and I'm like, you know what? I usually like bottled and bond. That right at 100 tickles my fancy. You know what I'm saying? And so anyway, we're drinking the old tub, and it was cheap. It was $24.99, and at that price point, I thought I think it's pretty good. It is. Larry even said he thinks it's pretty and good. He's had a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Methuselah yes. has not had the amount of alcohol oh, that Larry has. But had. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's made by Jim Beam, and this was apparently before the Jim Beam had taken off. So that was the original one of the original recipes. I had something like that. Okay, <laughs> but see, what I wanted to say was. You go to all these liquor stores and there's stuff in there that we haven't had a lot of. That's, a, that's speaking to one or two things. We've either had a lot of. Or they don't have a good supply. <laughs> right. So it's either we're bad or they're bad. So I'm going to go with they're bad because you found something else. Well, versus- you know, it's not just that. When I go to a liquor store, I like to see something that I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to try yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I read a lot about different bourbons, mm-hmm. at least reviews. <laughs> and, you know, I'm always on the hunt for something we haven't had before. Same hey, Larry, States. and they did have something I've never seen before. They had an Evan Williams 1783 small batch. $21.99 for that. So, and we Where was and this? That was at uh, Big Johnson's. Oh, I know where that is. Right in the mall. Well, yeah. 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 Across the street Struggle from the mall. Street, yeah. But anyway, uh, I almost got that one, but I, you know what? I was just like, flip a coin. And then it landed there. Yeah. So anyway, what's the matter? Did you throw your label in your, gla- in your shot glass? <laughs> hey, you know what? Mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your business. I have to take back what I said earlier. I think it's us. It's not the it's not the liquor stores. It's us. <laughs> we we've had too much. He just threw it right on in there. He was getting ready to grab it. I was like, he said, Oh, shut up. You're looking too much. <laughs> he grabbed it out. Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business. Oh, good. So anyway, let's talk about our sponsors. We're very blessed ah. to have, I mean, the best sponsors of ah. any cigar show oh, yeah, out there. Tell the truth. Tell the so, truth. And right here, if you're watching the YouTube, you see pictures. Mm-hmm. Case Elegance. Dude, I'm loving my humidor. And everyone I know who has purchased one. Yes. And that's a lot of guys I know. Tim's got one. Zeka's got one. Jax has got one. Uh, John Pr- Prince has got one. I mean, all these people I know. Oh, yeah, Jax Rock's got yeah. one. Dude, and they all... Like rave about it. Yeah, because they're it's a taking great pictures of them. Because I mean, they're knocking it out of the park, and the price point is mm. spot on. Come on, come on. I mean, for the Ferrari, the black <laughs> and white one, one, yeah, hundred bucks, and you get a piece of art. And the one I've got, which is the Octador, mm-hmm. it's two hundred bucks. And I, I think it's actually a little bit less than two hundred bucks. Is, and then the same thing with, with the, that. Military footlocker dude. That I got. <laughs> you know what? what? I don't get me wrong. I love my humidor, but every time I see a picture of yours, I'm like, I should have kept that. I should have. I should have asked, asked hey, him which hey, one he hey, wanted. No, no, no. I shouldn't have given him one. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you hey, take this. Hey, hey, hey no. <laughs> and it wouldn't have been that one. Hey, no, I just kept them both. Oh. <laughs> 
I did not do that. What are you smoking right now? <laughs> <laughs> he shut me up quick. You, hear? <laughs> you, you see that, Larry? He's like, I ain't even going nowhere, Brian. What are you smoking right now? Who? That's where'd you good, get it from? It? Where'd That's you get it from? <laughs> shut, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if you haven't checked them out, go by. Look down in the show notes. There's a link to their website. Go down. Look. And they send you everything you need. I mean, it's the first time I've ever seasoned my own humidor that I didn't have, like, mm. that I didn't get pissed. <laughs> or I didn't take it down to the leaf and <laughs> have Scott or Jay season it for me because I got mad. I'm like, it ain't working. Right. And they just look at me like, okay, give it here. <laughs> but see, Case Elegance takes all the guesswork oh, out. I did mine. Boom. I did mine. And it's still at like 68. Yeah. Like, right mine. I just changed it out about an hour ago. So you got to get time. I, well, no, I'm at 65. Yeah, but you do. 65 Five to 72. 70. That's, that's where you want to be. Yeah, me too. I would actually be, I would prefer probably 65 to 68 mm-hmm. than I would 70, 70 to 72. 72. But just because you start getting a little, I mean, if you're doing long term, yeah. I think 72 is fine. Yeah. But if you're smoking all the time, I personally don't want 72. Because it makes your cigars a little too moist. Gotcha. You gotcha. know what I mean? That's just I gotcha. me. Gotcha. But anyway, look down the show notes. Go by and look at Case show Elegance. Show and if you use the uh, code Cigar Talk Coin, you'll get a challenge coin with the Cigar Talk logo on one side and Case Elegance on the other. And they're running out. Yeah, it's a very limited yep, run. It's a limited so run. I mean, out? yeah. In fact, I saw Sandy just got hers, and she was showing a picture of it. And somebody was like, "Hey, how do I get one of those?" And Case so, elegance. yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, our next sponsor is Macau Cigars. Hey, I mean, hey. right next to you, we got a new. Look, put put it over there. Put it over there. There we go. Macallus sign. Don't you love the new colors? The yes. red, white, and blue. Red, white, Boom. Blue. And I mean, dude, everything they've done. And right now, if you're watching the video, I'm going to show a picture of a ambassador coin. Mm, so nobody's got the nine ninety nine. Not yet. I haven't heard. Or the ten. Ha- no, you mean the nine 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 nine? Yeah. Or the ten thousand. Yeah, we were waiting to hear who gets one of those. Yes. But anyway, uh, look in the show notes, and you can become a McAuliffe ambassador. Yes, they have a huge line of cigars, which yes, fits every budget, 4 to 42, every profile. I mean, you can be like a Connecticut. You can be smooth, creamy, mild, all the way up to, to full-blown boom. boom. And so, I mean, everything that you want in a cigar is there. And then let's take it a little bit further. Everything that you want in a company is there. I mean, they're across the board hitting it on all cylinders, and we appreciate it, and that's why we love having the sponsors that we do. Then let's go to Viva La Vida. I think that's uh, Larry smoking a Club 500 Five right now. Minutes. And Lou, look at that ash. That ash Five is minutes. nice. Wish we could have a camera go. Eek, look, eek. I'll tell you what. I have been loving the Jester. I know. This is- that, it's like the ultimate Robusto. It's like a Robusto on steroids. <laughs> because I want to say it's like five inches by like 56. Yeah. And it's just a great stick. And that has been my go-to for about the last two weeks, mm. except about the last four days when I had a sore throat, uh-huh. I didn't smoke much. Okay. And then I tended to go really light. Okay. Which which cigar company went out of business because of that? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you smoking less? <laughs> so, somebody sending you an email. Hey, What's wrong? Hey. You all right, Rob? Got to keep the lights on. <laughs> real. What's up, Rob? You all right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, check out Viva La Vida. And if they're not in your shop, go by your shop and ask them to start carrying them. They're a hit everywhere they go because they're just quality sticks. I mean that that should be their slogan. Just quality, quality sticks. <laughs> Just quality sticks. I mean, that's what we do. With you know thumb. what I mean? AJ Fernandez blends it and then mm. they just knock it out of the knock park. It out the park. And it's like every day. Just quality sticks. Every day I'm hustling, hustling. Okay. No, no. no. Okay. Uh, people from Lubbock can't sing that so Oh. <laughs> That's probably a fair statement. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a fair statement. There's no hustling. Up so, <laughs> hustling, maybe, but not hustling. <laughs> fair. Yes. Fair. Sir. So, anyway, and then let's talk about our home shop, 
Talk about the leaf. Em. I mean, the leaf is just, I mean, home away from home. Home away from home. And if you haven't been to the leaf, you got to go by. I mean, it's, it is home away from home. Yes, it's an open community. They've got anything to do with tobacco products. Is there? I mean, if it's brown <laughs> and you can smoke it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 Pipe tobacco. If it's legal in the state of Texas. <laughs> okay, true. If it's legal. But I mean, like, I know some cigar shops don't, but he has cigarettes. Yes, he has those natural, though. But it's only yes. the natural only, cigarettes. Yeah. None of the chemical You're ones. not going to find Newports and Coons and Marlboro's. <laughs> right. Paul Mall's. You're not going to find them there. Right. <laughs> None of them. Right. <laughs> and you can't walk in there smoking any of those either. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> one of us will jump up and be like, <laughs> out, out, bye, bye. Out. And no, then there's a no. sign that used to be there. Oh, yeah. You can only smoke what you get in here. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what? I tried to talk Bill into that for years before he finally did it. Yeah. I, I was remember. like, dude, everywhere I go, they have those signs up. And I remember the day he did it. Somebody came in with them GPCs, you know, grown people cigarettes. He walked out. What in the hell is that? <laughs> I think it was Mike smoking a mm. Paul Mall. No, it wasn't a Paul Mall. It was the, that that red and white pack that just says cigarettes. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, that that has to go. And then the sign went up. <laughs> and then the sign went up. I was sitting there. I was like, yeah, because them things stink, man. Whew, God. Yeah, they did stink. But the leaf, we were me and Jay were in the, uh, in the humidor yesterday. And I went in there. I grabbed two sticks. And then I said, Jay, you know me. Surprise me. And he walked all the way down to the back of the uh, humidor. I was like, I can't walk that far because <laughs> you know how long it is. Then he went through this door and disappeared. And he came back with something that I was able to bless you and Larry with because I bought enough to bless you also with. And it was like, thank you, man. It was something that was just so, so I hadn't, I hadn't had one in so long. And I've never had this one, well, which was. Oh, that's the payback. The payback, room one on one. But these had set for two years since 2017. Oh, whoa! Since 2017, whoa, that's four years since 2017. Have you smoked one yet? I smoked one. I gave you one. I got one for you. I got How one was for the Larry. one you smoked, dude? One nice. million. Forget a hundred. One million. I was like, thank you, man. That's what we get hey, from our home shop. Thank you for bringing me one. Go ahead. I thought about you. Appreciate and, it. And I didn't smoke all of it. I thought about Larry, too. I said, here. And he looked at me. He said, no, that's too small. I said, smoke it. Hey, I bought three of these. I know. And I thought of Larry. <laughs> and then I lit one up and said, this is for you, Larry. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> this is for you, Larry. I'm going to enjoy the shit out of this one. But I just appreciate it being able to go to the leaf and Jay knowing who I am and what, what my palate is. And he bring it out and oh, just bless dude. it. Man. It is. Let me tell you something. When you have a tobacconist uh, that knows your palate, uh, and when he puts together something without ooh, your input, yes, it's such a pleasure it's, to it's smoke. Christmas, man. I mean, yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's like if I wasn't married and Jay wasn't married. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a man that can like buy me gifts that I appreciate. Man, I would love, I can't, I would love those gifts. I mean, <laughs> I've been married 26 years this week. Yeah, you we saw, saw that. that. We saw. And God, my, God my, bless Miss B. <laughs> my wife is an angel. So you say, God bless Miss B. <laughs> but my wife has never picked me out a gift mm. that beats Jay. Mm -mm. Now she's given me some good gifts. Don't get me wrong, but. I mean, when Jay picks out a sampler for you, he speaks Dude, to your soul. Yes. My wife goes to him now to get gifts. She's like, give me, I want to get something for Brian. He comes back with these things. She presents it to me and I just look and smile. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. And she's like, well, Jay did it. <laughs> I, I, when I, next you. time I see him, thank you, man. Thank you. It's not a tie. <laughs> right. It's not a pair of socks. Well, you know, this year was the first year that my wife bought me something for Father's Day that blew my socks off. Okay. My Blackstone griddle. Oh, yes. Yes. Normally, we don't do big gifts. And so, and you know what I, I know, though, is even though she bought it for me, 
you know how much cooking I've been doing so she don't have to be cooking. <laughs> she helped her. <herself. laughs> right. Like, what was that? You said you bought her some pots or something one time? Yes. This was payback. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect payback. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> So, anyway, no, if you haven't been down to the Leaf, go down and check them out. Where and is it at? It's at 1166 North 2nd. Yes. And also, down in the show notes, we'll have their phone number. Yes, but sir. you can call them up. they got the Viva La Vidas. Mm. They've got the McAllis. Yes. They've got cutters. They've got lighters. They've got all. They've got a. They've got a humidor that's like noah's ark it is. it's huge I told you you walked to all the end. wood I was like dude i can't go down there. yeah it's one time far. i was in there and a pigeon landed <laughs> it wasn't a dove it was a pigeon <laughs> he's like oh where'd that bird come from <laughs> and he had a stick for you he's yes <laughs> it's a messenger pigeon <laughs> no 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 a real stick. <laughs> oh, I got you. He, got, he came he out with a real a stick. stick. <laughs> yeah. Good. I like so, that, man. Hey, anyway, guys, we've got Tim Swanson coming up next. Great interview with this guy. You're not going to miss it. He uh, started and does Cigar Daily. And then when we come back from the interview, we're going to give you this week's portion of the top 100 yes, must-try yes, cigars. Yes, so anyway, guys, we'll be right back after a quick break. Hey, man, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us today, man. I appreciate it, dude. Absolutely. You are an icon in the industry. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Yeah, some days I feel like an icon. Some days I feel exhausted and ready to take a big nap. But I have a lot of fun in cigars, brother. You know, one of my favorites, and I, I don't know how long ago, but it was a long time ago, when you gave one of your very first tours of your humidor. Do you remember that? Mm hmm. That's like when I started watching your show, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I love this. Oh, yeah. That's like, I, I feel like a, like the dog chasing a car that caught it and doesn't know what to do with it. Like, it's the it's every guy's dream in the cigar industry. Have a great shop, have, you know, have successful stuff going on, and we have, and it's great. And it's for me, it's just like, man, how do, how do we get here? I love it every day, man. It's That's great. awesome, man. So uh, for you guys that maybe don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know, but this is Tim Swanson. Welcome to Cigar Talk, Tim. How are you, brother? Oh, man, I am doing really well. It's Saturday at the shop, which is my day to chill a little bit. The industry's not open. UPS isn't delivering. So I don't like half of my job. I have to wait till Monday. So today I just get to run deals and I'm actually doing a smoking test between uh espinosa's 601 sake bomb and the espinosa uh 601 adam so just kind of having a good day and hanging out with you this is like great thank you so much man so let me ask you what how how long have you been in the cigar industry let's start there i think it's been six years now i think it was like 20 five five six years i think i got in 2015 started working as a clerk at a chain of cigar shops in phoenix and then uh, it's been that's ever since. Now, are you still in Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're in north central Phoenix where we're at for Cigars Daily proper, where the shop is right now. We're like right smack dab north in the central part of the town. So, like, I didn't know when I got started in the cigar industry how, like, big Atlanta was in the cigar industry. But what I've come to realize is that, like, Phoenix is like a really big cigar town. It's not yes. like, you know, like yes. there's like there's lots of places that are cigar towns, but Phoenix, Arizona in general, man, you guys are cigar smoking crazy madmen. So if you want to know if you want to know where the biggest biggest places in the country are for cigars, there's like three that lead the pack. Obviously, Florida is going to be one of them because it's like Cuba 2. Right, right. right. And, then, and then if you go out of there the second largest territory for cigars, I believe, is Atlanta, Georgia. It's this, it's big, it's huge. And then the third is Arizona. And in Arizona, in Phoenix alone, we have 70 cigar shops and lounges, seven zero. Is that uh, because out- there's so many old people there? It, there's a lot of old people. <laughs> and our laws for tobacco are outstanding. I mean, there are better places. Texas is better. Their tobacco tax is one penny per cigar. Yeah, ours is so one right. cent. Why even do it, right? Like, why even, like, how do you even audit that company? You're like, show us all your invoices. And they're like, why? And the DOR is like, right, why? So uh, for us, though, you know, here you can get a tobacco license in about a week, cost 25 bucks to do. And if you have half good mind for business sense, you can do all right. Nice. Wow. 
I don't, I don't know what Texas is. I want to say I think it's about the same, but it's like 180 bucks, which is still not bad. It's not. That's not bad. It's not California where it's right. like thousands of dollars and takes six months. And you got to give away one of your children. It's terrible. Now, how how is the like getting a liquor license in Arizona? Is it easy as well? Uh, no, it sucks. Uh, okay. That part's expensive. And there's a lot of different kinds of liquor licenses. And I only know this information because Jim and I looked into this at one point and then decided promptly to not go forward. But, you know, if you want to get a full what they call Title seven liquor license, I think it's Title seven. Uh, but it gives you access to everything. You sell spirits and beer and wine, all the stuff. It's like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, wow. And they had a smaller one that was just for beer and wine that used to be like 15 grand. But now there's a grocery store chain that's putting in a bunch of bars in grocery stores so that, you know, the wives can shop and the husbands can drink, which is, you know, magical. But they've driven the price of the beer and wine one up from 15 to like forty thousand dollars because they're just buying them all up. So that part is it's a little harder. It's a little I, more got you. I got you. I got you. I didn't had no idea that Phoenix was like one of the top places for cigar smokers because you know i I, i've only been out to arizona a couple of times and all i remember it was it was hotter than sin and i didn't enjoy it so i went in july that was probably a bad time to go but that was that was your mistake (laughs) yes it was 121 and when i got back to texas people were like yeah but it's a dry heat and i was like it's freaking hot (laughs) There is no such thing as dry. It's just an right. oven. Uh, so are you originally from Arizona? No, I was born in Colorado, and uh, my dad worked for IBM, so we moved around when I was a kid. And and he's from Minnesota. So when he came out to Arizona for a business trip, he was like, this is it. I'm moving my family out here. We're staying. So I've been here 30 years. You know, we moved we moved here when I was five or six, so I, I've been here the last 30 years. So you're 35? Yeah, 36 now. Young and, man. Uh, young man. You know, what's funny is I got to tell you this, and this is, has nothing to do with the show, but you know, when I was looking for some photos for the promo of this show, I did Cigar Daily, and of course, your photo comes up in Google, but then there's another guy who looks kind of like you, but is not you, that kept popping up, and I was really? like, that's the strangest thing I've ever seen, because it's not anything to do with tobacco, or at least not that I could find, and I was like... He's not as cool looking as you, of course, but of course, y- y'all share that same type of look. I'm, you know? I'm going to do the image search on my computer right now, see if I can find him. There's that bald gap tooth guy. Did you search just Cigars Daily or Cigars I, Daily Tim? I might have been Tim. So I just thought it was funny. I was like, they look like they could be related, but they're not like identical at all. But I'll have to send you a screenshot. Send me a screenshot. There's in the Cigars Daily Nation. Facebook group. We got a Facebook group that's got almost thirty thousand people in it right now. Wow! And there's a dude that keeps posting, and he's and he's bald, and his eyebrows are blonde, and so he looks a lot like me. And everybody, every time he posts, they're like, "Is this Tim's twin? Is it a <laughs> doppelganger?" So I was wondering if that's the guy, but yeah. I mean, bald, bald with a goatee. That's like a style, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like an American icon now. Damn straight. You know, thirty years ago, that was like. Well, the homeless guy, but now it's a style. Yeah. So, you know, one of the other great shows that I caught you on that really like, in fact, you made me feel like I accomplished something because I was watching one of your shows and you had uh, Sokka on with you. And it was the episode where he was talking. You ask him how many cigars he smoked. And at that time, it was like 75,000 cigars because he said he smokes like what? 15 a day or somewhere like that and so anyway whenever i had zaka on my show i felt like i had reached a pinnacle i was like i i've done what tim has done now oh yeah man so anyway so what's some of the great people that you've interviewed in the business that would be a highlight for you yeah there you know my perception of the cigar industry has changed so much since i started doing this some of the people I looked up to when I first got into the industry, I wouldn't speak with anymore because I've, I've learned a lot about the character of a lot of cigar makers and who these people are. So some of the guys I used to really look up to, I, I won't even do business with. Some guys I didn't even know about, I like think are the greatest people in the world. So And, and I've had almost all of them on the show, but I'll tell you, I'll give you my my top guys that, and gals that I've worked with. You know, um, 
Saka is for sure one of them. I mean, Saka's credentials just speak for themselves. The dude started off at Drew Estate, or he started off at JR Cigars, right? Uh, and then when he was at Drew Estate, he came in, they were doing $4 million a year in annual revenue, okay? And then when he left, they were doing $80 million a year <laughs> in annual revenue. Like, it's just, his numbers speak for themselves. So I love Saka for that reason. And he's just also authentically a good guy. He can come kind of come off as kind of a prick. And I think he owns that pretty well, yeah. but he's also just a genuine dude. Like what you get from Saka is what you, is what Saka is. Right. So you can always take the guy. I, I liked and, his interview because it was just like, I had no expectation. I had seen him on your show. So, I mean, I didn't want to do the exact repeat. And right. so I just kind of let him go his own way. And sure enough, he will definitely go his own way. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. You get him talking and he'll go. And it's great because you learn because when Saka talks, you learn a lot from him. And I love that. Now, outside of Saka, there's another guy that I didn't I didn't know very well, wasn't very aware of when I first got into the cigar industry. I And I, I knew about Alec Bradley cigars, but I thought Alec Bradley was like a person. So like the first time I got a call from Bradley Rubin, uh, I was like, who the hell is this? He's like, yeah, from Alec Bradley. I was like, what? And I was like looking him up online while I'm talking to him on the phone. I was like, who are you? And I was just so stupid when I first got to know it. But as I've learned about the the company of Alec Bradley and then Alec and Bradley, the boys, right. your dad, Alan Rubin, is a sensational person, a man of his word, an authentic guy, very friendly, very kind. And, I, you know, we, we had an issue with Alec Bradley at one point that had the opportunity to get really hairy. And because Alan Rubin is such an authentic dude, it never did. And he was really great. So I've really come to respect him as not just a cigar maker who's award winning with all the high ratings, but as just a really quality person. And then my third one is, and this is my all time top tier guy, Nestor Placencia. Uh, I, I have a man crush on the guy. He's a, <laughs> such an inspiring dude. He, he's a, 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 a um, uh, a reader. He reads constantly. He's always reading new books. He He's an innovator in the industry. He's working on uh, doing stuff with tobacco that nobody else has done and, and does it in a family that grows more tobacco than anybody on the planet outside the Cuban government. So wow. I mean, just really, really. And, and, and also, again, a really authentic, very real guy. You can take him at his word. Who you see is what you get. And that's a huge deal for me. That is awesome. So let me ask you, that's the top people. Who's your top three worst one? I'm just kidding you. We're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I can slam some people, but I won't. Uh, yeah, trust me, I know. So what made you decide to get into the cigar business full time? I mean, how, how long were you smoking cigars? I mean, did you start when you went to work for a cigar place? Or was that like something that you dabbled in before? No, I, uh, I started smoking cigars on the day of my 18th birthday. Because I had this massive misconception that smoking cigars is something a man does. Like, I thought it was the dude's thing. And, and for sure, it's got that appeal, right? Like, it's like a manly thing. But I, as I've gotten into the cigar world, I've discovered that cigars are for every adult. Like, there's nobody out there that cigars aren't for. And I see it in the in uh, our Facebook group and on our YouTube channel. Like, the people who comment, there are... There are liberals, there are conservatives, there are men, there are women, there are Christians, there are Muslims, there are white people, there are black people, there are every kind of person represented in this in this microcosm of a world that we're in, and it's so cool. So I started smoking when I was 18 out of this idea that it was like a man's thing, but I've learned that it's so much more. And I smoked cigars from the time I was 18 till probably the time I was 30. And then I was, I, before cigars, I was a minister. I worked at a church. I did music, church music. And I, I was trying to plant a church and it was just not going. And, and I went 52 days without a paycheck there and was like, okay, I have to do something. So I got a part time job at a boxing gym teaching classes to soccer moms. And then I got a part time job at a cigar shop as a clerk. And after a while, the opportunity to get full time in the cigar industry came up to be operations director for a chain of retail shops and a website here in Phoenix. So I jumped into that. We closed the doors on the church and I went full time into cigars. And it was just like it was a dream come true. I had already been smoking cigars for, you know, 12 years. I was rolling cigars in my spare time because I just loved it so much. And so I'd say that the second I set foot in the industry, even as a retail clerk, I had my eyes on this as a full time thing. And, it, and it's now blossomed into something I could have never anticipated. So two questions on that. One, how are you as a cigar roller? 
Did you get pretty Absolutely good? Absolutely abhorrently bad. <laughs> okay. Like I I roll cigars like a white guy. Like that's that's <laughs> all I can tell you about it. Like I I go I went to the factory. So in 2019, Jim and I got to go down to uh, Nicaragua and and tour all the Placencia factories, and I got to roll cigars with their tercedores there. And a tercedor is a special kind of roller. He's like the virtuoso of cigar rollers. They can do anything, right? They can do the bunching, they can do the binder, they can do the wrapper, they can do the special kinds of pigtails and perfect those shapes, and they're really good. And I rolled cigars with this guy, and he literally had to get behind me and put, and he <laughs> ghosted me, right? Like Patrick Swayze, he came up behind me and grabbed my hands and showed me how to roll a cigar like a child. Wow. So, no, not good at it. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's awesome that you got to have that experience anyway, man. So oh, yeah. that asked me another question while you were down there seeing all that. So the Torcedors are like the master rollers. So are there other rollers that just do the same roll part every time and then like other people put it together or is like, how does that work? So at most factories, the way that the rolling floor is set up, at least in my experience for the factories that Jim and I got to go to, they're, they're for the bulk of rollers, there are two positions. There's the bunch arrow and the roll arrow. And the bunch arrow, and they sit, the two people typically sit at a four foot table. And, uh, the roll arrow, or, I'm sorry, the bunch arrow does the filler leaves into his hand and makes the bunch, which is all your long filler leaves, and then rolls that into a binder. Then all of that goes into a cigar press and it's pressed typically for 15 to 20 minutes to give it that very round shape. Then it comes back to the rolling table where the, uh, where the roll arrow puts the wrapper on it. And they do that for most sizes, your Robusto, Toro, probably Torpedoes, definitely Churchill's, Gordo's, most of your Parejo round sizes that don't change their ring gauge. You'll get a, a bunch arrow and a roll arrow. Now the Tercedores, those guys are the ones who are skilled and gifted enough that they could do anything. So typically in a factory, they'll tell you if they, if a brand makes a, uh, uh, a Solomon size of their high end cigar. They may only have three people in the factory that can actually roll that thing. Wow. And those are your virtuosos. Those are the guys that can really, really do it. So yeah, there's, there's a few positions there, but that high end is, is typically just a, a handful of people in each factory. Very nice. Well, the other thing that struck me was that you were in the ministry before you got into cigars. Sure. And I think it's, is, is very, interesting to me at least how many people i know that were in the ministry at one time that's now in cigars yeah. i don't know if you've experienced that yourself but like the local shop here that i go to before he owned the shop he was a minister the guy who bought it from him uh he majored in uh theology and was going to yeah. be a minister and i mean everywhere yeah. i go i'm like there's something that going on there. There's a tie there. And I think it is just that the cigars bring people together. And like our old owner said, this is my congregation. This is my flock. And yeah. so I can kind of see that parallel there. Do you see that as well? I will. And I'll keep this short because I'll say this as a content creator myself. The second I start talking about church, religion, anything, viewership always drops on my <laughs> channel. So I'll, I'll keep this quick. Because a lot of people don't want to hear about it, but there does seem to be this really interesting connection between people of faith and the world of cigars, right? If you have a, if you hold strong spiritual beliefs, you also crave that type of community. I think cigar shops give that in a way that coffee shops don't anymore. Barber shops don't anymore. Like our, our town squares have changed. It used to be there's plenty of places where you could go and have a group right. of people people right and and now that's online that's all done online and it's and it's typically fake and it's you know just people taking pictures of themselves when they look good but these days there's so little of that that a cigar shop becomes that we you know we now have a, a group called theology and tobacco that meets once a month here and there's about a dozen guys that will come by and just have like a two-hour bible thing and i think it's great but yes i see a huge connection between that for whatever reason i don't know jesus lived till he was 33 on the earth maybe if he had lived another 30 years he might have opened a cigar shop well, I was going to say, maybe he would have lived another 30 years if he was smoking cigars. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But anyway. Cigars don't protect you from crucifixion. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's probably true. So yeah. you've been doing, now how long have you been doing cigars daily? Cigars daily is three and a half years. Three and a half years. Man, it seems so much longer than that. You do a lot of content. Yes, we've put out a lot of content three and a half years. Wow. And that was a goal from from very early on. It was like, okay, you know, I, 
there was a long time where I was doing cigars and doing YouTube and had an idea about all of this, that, about, about how to create content, about how, how a shop should be set up, how the humidor should be set up. And uh, coming to Cigars Daily, I got to do all of that. And even better, my partner, Jim, uh, he brought me into a whole other world of business wisdom that I also got to learn at the same time. So it was really a double windfall for me. I really got to stretch my legs in the cigar industry in a way that I, I didn't think I ever would. And I'm learning like crazy every day. So how did you come up with the idea that you wanted to do the cigar shop and video content? I mean, did I mean, did it, it goes hand in hand, I think. Sure. Absolutely. I, you know, the idea of, of doing cigar shop and content for me is a great marriage of what in the business world they call synergy, right? Because these days people want connection. And I, and I think that's a lot of what people are looking for online. And it goes back to sort of the town square thing and you're, you know, we're losing community in the real world. So when it comes to, you know, the internet and YouTube with cigars, what you're able to do and what we work to do here is bring people inside of our business. We want people to see who we are and how we do this. And so, uh, you know, some of the videos are instructional, how to light your cigar, how to cut your cigar. Here's five new cigars that you should try. And then cigar reviews. The other side of it are just vlog videos. Like this morning's video I put out is, um, what, what happens when Cigars Daily screws up your order? And I talked with our customer service guy, Dustin here, and we talked through, you know, being an online company and what that means and the stakes when they happen, how much they happen here and what we do about it. And it's just, it, to me, it's a really cool way of giving our people, especially our people who buy online, the ability to feel like family here. And when they come visit and they do every day, they're like, I feel like I already know you guys. That's how that's that for me is one of the big metrics of success. Do people come here and already feel like fan? Yeah. And I, I think that's an important facet of any business, but especially in the cigar business. And we kind of have that relationship with Cigar Talk and the Leaf in Abilene, Texas. And oh, so yeah. if 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 you go by Abilene, uh, Texas and you don't stop at the leaf, you're missing out. But if you do go by there, there's a very good chance that myself or my co-host or Jay or Scott, one of us is going to be at the shop. And oh, yeah. the funny thing is I've had several people send me a message like, Hey man, I was at the shop yesterday. I missed you. And I was like, I was there. And they were like, Oh, I came in and got cigars. I didn't see you. And I left. And I was like, always ask if I'm in the back, if I'm in the back, come on back. So I'm like, don't ever just think I'm not there. I'm usually there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We get, you know, people People will come in. They'll ask, you know, is Tim around? Sometimes is Jim around because Jim's on the videos. But when when people come in here, we've actually set up this Cigars Daily so that we're not as accessible. At the last HQ, the second one, we Jim in my office was in the hallway on the way to the bathroom. So we could literally couldn't get 20 minutes to ourselves without an employee or a friend or a customer or out of town visitor popping their heads and be like, Hey guys, what's happening? Right. And like, yeah, I mean, we're sometimes we're having really serious conversations, like 30,000 foot conversations. We're talking about the scope of cigars daily and everything we want to do. And then some of you guys is like, Hey guys, what's happening? You know what you should do? I got an idea for your business. We, uh, so yeah, at this place, we're also a little less accessible, but I think people ask for the most part and we get to go out and shake hands. That's always a highlight of the day. Well, and I want to ask you also change gears here just a minute. What do you like to pair your cigars with? Cause I'm looking back on your shelf there and I got to apologize. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see as normal as I should be. It looks like you have some, uh, Woodford reserve. Is that Woodford reserve? Yes, it's wood for real. I mean, yes. Uh, and I, I haven't counted the bottles back here, but uh, these, you know, <laughs> I I put a thing out. We were running kind of low on whiskey and I put something out online, took a picture of it and said, I think I need to get some more whiskey because we're running low. And people just started giving us gifts like friends were coming in with two or three bottles here. And so literally most of what's up there is gifted from friends. Very nice. Uh, and, and, and I don't honestly drink as much scotch or whiskey or bourbon anymore. Uh, I'm drinking a lot less these days. I had a bit of a, a health issue that I'm sort of working through. But at the same time, I love whiskey. I love bourbon. I'm sort of gravitating more towards scotch these days. But my heart of hearts, my true love is beer. Really? I love beer. Oh, I love beer so much. Uh, I, I, yes, I have, I have a passionate love affair with many types of beers, but I'm a big wheat beer guy too. Okay. See, I'm not a beer drinker at all. I, I, I just can't. It fills me up. 
I don't know. It doesn't do that to everybody, but when I drink beer, if I drink two beers, I'm done. And mm-hmm. I, that's why I love whiskey and bourbons. And I will ask you this. Have you ever had spring bank scotch? No. Spring bake? Spring bank. Spring bank. Right, yeah. Write that one down. That's my very favorite. And I don't drink a lot of scotch, but if I can find that, I always pick up a bottle. But what I love about their story is they are the last scotch still made the old traditional way with no machines, no computers, no nothing. They still do it the old fashioned way. And they're the last one to do it. And it's not real smoky peaty. It's more of a real light, light peat. And the reason that, and I don't know if you know this, but I had a scotch expert on the show once and they explained it to me that when you have a scotch that's very light in that peat flavor, what it is is where the peat grows is right on the edge of the water. And if you have that real frothy water on top, it takes that peat flavor out of it so it mellows out the peat in the scotch. Yeah. But yeah. if you get a chance, that spring bank, I always, people think that they sponsor us as much as I talk about them, but they don't. You're more than welcome to. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm a big bourbon fan every now and then I'll have scotch, but I was just looking at your collection up there and I love that you got gifts. We got a gift, uh, package of the day, somebody from California, Mr. Z. And it was, it was really embarrassing because he sends us a care package. I open it up. My wife's standing there with me and I open up this box and it's got cigars For me, cigars for my co-host, a big bottle of Buffalo Trace, which I'm a big fan of. And then there's a box that says just for Rob. So I open that up and it's a giant rubber dildo. (laughs) So my fans of the show have some good humor. Yeah, they do. So and my wife was like, that's not funny. And I was like, well, (laughs) it's kind of funny. So anyway, so what do you plan on doing as far as the future goes for Cigar Daily? Are you guys expanding? Are you opening more shops? Are you uh, moving to other states? Are you staying in Phoenix? So the goal here is uh, is a pretty our, our strategy is pretty singular for Cigars Daily. You know, it, it, I think that there's a huge temptation when you get into the world of cigars to to do everything and have your hands in everything. And we have done a lot. Like we have cigarsdaily.com that feeds most of our audience and uh, is where people go to look for deals from us. We also have our own national brand, American Viking Cigars, which is carried in about shops in about a dozen states right now. And uh, and we, we enjoy that, but we've had the opportunity. When we first opened, we did pipe tobacco for a long time. We've had the opportunity to do the CBD products and people have pitched all that to us. And Jim and I very early on were like, you know what? We just we want to be great at one thing rather than me- mediocre at a few things. So uh, we said we want to be about premium cigars. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, we also going forward, we want to have the we want to be the best and do the best we possibly can. So to us, having multiple retail locations is in the way to accomplish that. I know that it's something people would like, but also what it does is it removes from us the ability to control the quality. Like here, Jim and I are almost always here. So we know that we can make this place run like a finely tuned machine. And it does. And and in huge part, because our team here is awesome. They're great people. But as soon as you start opening more stores, it just compounds the issues. So right now, No plans for any other locations for Cigars Daily. The goal is we want to make the best damn cigar content online. We want to do that for free. And we want to do it in exchange for the simple opportunity to offer people deals on cigars. And as long as we can do that, we'll continue doing that. Well, I think you're doing a great job doing that. And when like when I think of the people that I look up to in the industry that do content creation, you're at the top. I love what you do. Thank you, man. Thank you and so much. I've been, you know, Cigar Talk has been around now since 2018, uh, December the 15th. So you were started, I want to say, about a year before we got started. January 1 of 2018 would be or January 1st or the 4th or something like that. Yeah, it was a it was an unbelievably short runway for Cigars Daily. We started at the beginning of 2018 and we launched in on February 18th. So we really had about 7 weeks to build the channel, to build the website and to uh get the the actual 
building furnished with humidor and cigars and everything like that. And I mean, it was a, it was, I mean, for Jim and I, it was 70, 80 hour work weeks. Now, did you have a background in content creation or was this a huge learning curve just thrown at you? It was a huge learning curve. And, uh, and you know, I've, I've, uh, when I was in, before I was in cigars, I had a blog. So I I've been writing, I'd been creating some content online, but this cigars were really my first introduction to video content and, and actually having an audience. My blog never had about more than a thousand people on it. Now with cigars daily, I think our total following is about 200,000 people. And so now we've got, you know, a really sizable group of people. So this has been a huge learning experience for me. That's, that's awesome. And I can relate to that because we just started in audio originally and we just went to YouTube, I think maybe eight months ago. And, yeah. but just the audio itself is a challenge if you've never done it before. And just about the time I feel pretty confident with our audio, my son decides we should start doing video and that just throws a whole <laughs> nother wrench in it. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm the one doing all the editing. So I'm a one stop shop here. So I don't want to take on any more than what we already do, but yeah, I, I, I is, love to hear other people that experience that growing pain of trying to figure things out. So I, I get to talk to a lot of people who, who want to start a YouTube channel and I, you know, I almost always have a message in my inbox somewhere, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or the email from somebody who's like, Hey, I want to start a channel. What do you think? And these days I almost unanimously tell people, go make 12 videos, put them on the internet and then call me. Because what people don't realize is that once you start doing this, like people have got a full time job, they're married, they've got kids and they're like, I don't know, maybe I'll start a YouTube channel. And that's great. But you're already taking on a load of work just with coming up with content, shooting that content, and then editing and posting. You've already created a part-time job for yourself. And then the worst possible thing is it works. If it's successful uh, right off the bat, then you've got messages to answer and you've probably got a half a dozen inboxes for those messages. And then you're really screwed because you still have a job, you still have a wife, you still have kids, you still have all this stuff going on, but you created this other you know, growing job for yourself. So I always try to talk people out of it before they jump in because- <laughs> Like, I, I don't think people realize everything that it takes to do. No, and it's definitely like having two separate jobs because, I mean, in a year, well, I guess we're on our third season now. We're on episode 145, oh, and yeah. uh, we never missed a single week except when I had COVID earlier this year, and we also do an after show just for our Patreon members so I took one of those shows and published it as a regular show, which was a horrible idea because that is not our audience that listens to this show. Yeah. The, the Patreon show is much more raw, raunchy and not suitable for the general public. Sure. Yeah. And I got phone calls about that. It was like, Hey. I don't know if that was a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but that's the only week we ever missed that we didn't do a regular show. And I mean, you know, when you decide to do this, you have to have a commitment because if you're not going to deliver to the people who take the time to listen, then you might as well not be doing it. Absolutely. Well, hey, man, what, what, what advice do you have for the young guys like me that are, you know, chasing our dream, doing what we do, and we look up to you and see what you're doing? And we are like, this is a role model for us. Yeah, it's a, it, the recipe is, is, uh, is not tremendously difficult. Just get up before the competition, work harder than the competition during the day, go to bed after them and uh, give it, make sure that when you leave at the end of the day, you have nothing left to give. Because I mean, these days it's, it's, there's a lot of competition out there, no matter what you're doing, right? Thanks so to COVID, especially, right? Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> online, the online content creator world ballooned during this period. Mm. And so there's, there's all new segments of the stuff coming out. Well, it's a, it's very interesting. I enjoy it. My co-hosts enjoy it. So we're going to keep doing it. And, you know, we do it because we just love the people. It's the community that we get to be a part of. And I mean, just think about it. And I know for you, especially how many people you've made relationships with all over the world that you never would have gotten to meet without this avenue. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. well, there's, hey, there's Tim, one other thing. I'll, yeah, one other thing please. Ask, that is a, a piece of input for anybody who's, who's looking to do this stuff. 
like I said, you got to get up earlier, work harder and go to bed later than your competition. But also, and this has been a key component for me, have somebody around who knows more than you. Surround yourself with people who are better than you. Always, always be seeking to do that. I could have come and done cigars daily. Uh, I never would have gotten a tenth of far, as far as we as we have gotten without Jim's wisdom in this. And so I'll say that those for me have been the two big things. Work really hard and make sure that you're pulling from wisdom. Very nice. Well, hey, man, thanks for taking the time to come on the show with us. I'm a big fan of what you do. I love what you guys do. And uh, if you ever need anything from us, man, feel free to reach out anytime, brother. Absolutely. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. Have a good one and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Same to you. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the interview with Tim. We're blessed to have him, man. Yes, sir. I mean, that is a guy that I look at and like, you know what? When you respect someone... I mean, it's like, that's how I want our show to be respected. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Gotcha. We, we, we like to have a little more tomfoolery, <laughs> yep. little shenanigans, but that's you know, you we, we still want to bring you a cigar show that's fun gotcha. and entertaining and that's sometimes inappropriate. <laughs> with you <laughs> i'm gonna pour me another one after that <laughs> so it's gonna get more inappropriate <laughs> real quick <laughs> uh, let me tell you something for 24.99 i've enjoyed this old tub and <laughs> not just you bottle and bond that little bop that little shot glass that larry <laughs> i thought he was drinking nyquil over there <laughs> dude Oof. man but I, I truly love that old tub that's a good that, where you, I, you told me yeah I, I, i'm I really surprised i haven't ever seen it before but you know i'm always a big fan of bottle and bond yeah it's just something about a whiskey or bourbon that's right at that 100 proof that i think is like really good move it move it it's not too hot not too and it's break. not too soft nah. it's like when that when that when that, that heat hit it was like you said it was quick Right. And, and was, after, after four or five glasses. You don't even feel it no more. <laughs> you don't even feel it no more. It's like, ah, oh, this is smooth. This is smooth. <laughs> it's like Eagle Rare. <laughs> <laughs> they did it right. <laughs> no, but uh, hats off to old tub, man. I'm impressed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we took a break and while the interview was going on, I lit up a gift from co-host extraordinaire Here Bryant. Oh man. And it's the payback from Room 101 and dude, this is nice. Yes, that's a good stick. You said it's been aging at the leaf for 4 years. 4 years. And you know the thing about it is, you know what I noticed whenever I'm smoking something that is like aged? What's that? The smooth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You get those complex flavors, but you don't get that harsh smoke mm-mm, at all. Mm-mm. And that comes from aging. Allowing it to grow up. Oh. Mature on his own, baby. To mature. Yes, on his own. He said, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Four years later. But, you know, like me and you, <laughs> they're not going to sit and wait four years for right. that. <laughs> well, tell everybody what you're smoking now. Club 500, baby. Club 500. Dude, and that, and look at the burn on that right out of the gate. As I used to say, and I still say about when you smoke that medallion or meet a Sumatra, I know what I'm going to get from the beginning. There's no surprise. Club 500, the exact same way. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. Yes, so we want to jump back into the top 100 yes, must sir. try cigars. Yes, sir. I'm loving the list, and we're going to start with, we've got some entries here from Jax and from NASCAR, Chris. Chris. And I got to say, man, I'm, I'm happy about both of these lists, but I'm also going to add a couple of our own. Okay. And right out of the gate, I'm going to say that Davidoff Oscuro. A hundred percent. And that Viatola, I got to find the, I, you know, I flipped I flicked my band, but anyway, it's a uh, Grand Perfecto. Mm. Dude, the skill set it takes to roll a cigar like that and then it burn the with way. the consistency. Yes. The I mean, perfection. Dude, it's a perfecto. It, dude. It's actually a perfecto. Yeah, it really was perfecto. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, I don't smoke a lot of Davidoff. One, because they're usually out of my price range. Mm. 
But two, they're not really available in most of the cigar shops that I mm-hmm. attend. So every now and then, I have the opportunity, and I'm going to smoke one. I think they make fantastic yes, cigars. They do. I don't think now. I haven't smoked a lot of them, but the ones that I have smoked have been spot on. Gotcha, gotcha. But anyway, let's start this list right here. And from Chris, we have the Padron 1926 mm. Maduro. Mm. I mean, mm. that that should, if you haven't tried that cigar, let me just tell you this. What are you first of all? Well. What Here's the thing: if you if you have not smoked cigars for over a year, I can understand you're not ready. Yeah, I can you're understand. not ready for that stick. Yeah. Now, the first time I smoked it, I had probably been smoking for two years, uh-huh. and I wasn't ready for okay. it. So I'm pretty comfortable at one year. You're not, unless yeah. you're a super taster like Kyle. <laughs> but no, I I think that the 1926. Maduro, gotcha. number nine, which is like the Churchill. Mm-hmm. If you've been, if you haven't had it, it's you should put it on your list. It's a special mm-hmm. smoke. In fact, I would say add it to your list and put it to where I'm going to smoke it now. I'm going to smoke it two months from now, okay. and I'm going to smoke it six months from now. And see the changes. And you will get more oh, and yeah. more each time. See the changes. But the great thing about it is, even though you get something new from it, it maintains that oh. Padron oh, Maduro yes. flavor oh, profile. Yes. Oh, yes. And that's one of the things I love about their cigars. The next one is, and now I have had one of these, and this is a fantastic cigar. It's the Davidoff Winston Churchill Late Hour. Yeah. We, where did I get that from? Was it I s- gave you one of those. Well, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't give you one of those. Um, Sean yeah, I thought had it was given Sean. me those to give to you. <laughs> and and you actually did what he asked you to do. <laughs> but I think I smoked his. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, so sorry about that, Sean. The next one on the now I've never had this one. This is a uh exclusive for the Luxury Cigar Club. Mm-hmm. It's the Viva La Vida Lancero. Somebody gave me one of them. How'd you like it? I loved it. And uh, what's his name? Uh, at the leaf pulled one out uh, Thursday. And I was like, I smoked that already. He's like, what? So, yeah, I've already smoked that. And it's a it's a dynamite stick, man. When I say I love everybody knows I love the Club 500. It's running with it. Really? It's running with it. Really? That Lancero is a bad stick, man. You know. Uh, Viva La Vida is not playing with no. people. No. And let me tell you this. Zeka has told me on more than one occasion uh-huh. that that Viva La Vida Lancero is the nuts. I think that's who gave it to me because I didn't buy it. It was a gift. I think it was a, I don't know who, I think it was Zeka gave me that. But I'm telling you, Viva La Vida ain't playing with folks, man. They, they letting them, they letting, they letting established and you know families what? know. You know what right I hear? You know the one thing that I love about Viva La Vida is that they have perfected a blend mm. Mm. and they've made different vitolas with that mm. blend mm. and every stick has its own characteristic mm-hmm. like none of the other vitolas, vitolas. Yeah. and like man the, for me the jester yeah. has been just killing it gotcha. if you have to me if you haven't smoked the <laughs> viva la vida jester <laughs> you're missing out because <laughs> That is a full-bodied, full-flavored cigar, and it's just the perfect size. You get the right amount of smoke, yeah, yeah. and it's just a beautiful yeah. thing. That's the way I am with the 500. I I love the 500, but, but that gesture, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. it's like a big l- Robusto. <laughs> it's like I love Robustos. I even love Petite Robustos, gotcha. but then you throw in that ginormous robusto yes they knocked it out of the park i got you i got you. all right so anyway we'll continue oh well you know what i'm gonna say chris you got great taste because <laughs> the mccallif medallia <laughs> which he didn't put a size on here so i'm gonna go ahead and mark it down as the your corona favorite. extra yeah, for or six by 46 and I mean that's that's an everyday winner right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I smoked one of those earlier today. Uh, surprise, surprise. Really? 
Now, this one, I don't know the cigar. It's the Perdomo Factory Tour. Have you had that? No, I haven't. Larry's shaking his head, giving him a thumbs up. So, you know what? Uh, I'm going to put that on my list. Me I too. I have not smoked that. Uh, the next one is the Rumo 101 Farce Maduro. I have smoked that. Mm. That is a f- fantastic. To me, that's a very medium stick. It's got a little sweetness. It's got a little earthiness t- notes, tones, okay. and that's a great stick. Mm. Uh, the next one on the list is the McAuliffe Riata. <laughs> now... <laughs> you know that was Luke's very first cigar yeah, ever, ever. And ever. dude, for me, the Riata and a Sumatra coffee is heaven. Yes, that, that is heaven. Yes. You got a nice, light, creamy cigar <sighs> with a good dark, medium, medium. flavor profiled coffee, and those two together mm, lights out perfectly paired. Lights out. And this one impresses me by Chris. He's got the Aladino Cameroon. <laughs> I know you love he that. Me. I'm with him. I'm with him. 100%. 100%. Yeah. The, the Aladino Cameroon is one of the best Cameroons uh, on the, the market. On the planet. Not just yeah. the market. The planet. You're not going to do better than no, that. Sir. And then Chris also brings to the forefront... The Blackbird Crow. We love that. Now, I love the Crow, and I don't know if you know this, but the Crow is the Mexican San Andreas wrapper. We talked about that. That is a great Mm -hmm. stick. And I, you know, that's like a $10 stick. Yes, it is. And when you get that level of flavor profile and that good of construction on a $10 stick, home run. Home run. run. Chris, good list, man. Good list. Yes, sir. That's why we love these guys. And then I'm going to hit up some Jack's recommendations okay. here. Now, Jack's went with some stuff that's local for him that I can't get, okay. but you can get it. Okay. And the first one on the list is Frank's Way. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. But if Jack says it's a good smoke, <laughs> I'm going to try it. Right. I'm going to put it on my list. The next one is an A.J. Fernandez. It is the last call Maduro. Mm. And let me tell you something. That's about a $5 stick. I've never had that one. I, it's, well, at least the one I've had, it's like a 4 by 52 mm. Good little smoke by mm. A.J. Great little mm. smoke. Uh, the next one is the Asylum Insidious which I have never had. I have not smoked a lot of Asylum. Because that that had me thinking, because I've I've smoked Asylum, but I've never had the Insidious. Well, you know, in general, not always, but in general, Uh the Asylum line, standard size is a six by Mm -hmm. 60 or better. Better, So I don't smoke a lot of Asylum just because, you know, I shy away from something that big. (laughs) putting it in my mouth no thank you so anyway that's just me uh the next one he's got on here is the rumo one farce which is what chris Chris had had, great oh now oh look at this the very next one he has is the aladino cameroon see See? that is a great stick we're two or three (laughs) now and and let me go i'm now i'm gonna add one of my own in here is the now this is my favorite aladino the Aladino Corojo Reserve. Yeah. Dude, that stick speaks to me on a different level than a lot of cigars have the ability to do. You know which one spoke to me here recently? And that was in July. Oh, the the, the Connecticut. No, the no. Patton. Oh, yeah. You, and, uh, and I gave one Zeka, to my, yeah. Zeka gave you a no, patent. No, I still had my patent. Well, from and and Saint, Zeka gave you gave one. one. So now I, I gave one to my son. And me and him sat there on the Fourth of July and smoked it. And he's like, "That is this thing. This is good." I said, "What are you tasting?" And he started talking about. He said, "It tastes kind of earthy." He said, "But it's a chocolate to it." I said, "You got a good palate for your first stick to pick that out." He's like, "This is good." He smoked half because it is. It's a, it's a long stick. It's a long. I stick. think it's eight inches. Yeah, he got half of it done. He's like, "I just can't go any further." I was like, "But 
you did long more than any, some first time smokers have ever done, dude. And sometimes long time smokers. Oh yeah. I mean the eight inch stick. Dude, I I, whew, I sat there for two hours on that bad boy, but it was so good and tight. I I have to say this: you got me on the Aladino. I thank you for that, dude. Aladino I makes thank a good you for stick. That. They do. They do. And I'm also going to tell you right now: if you like a creamy creamy connecticut mm. the aladino connecticut, connecticut is, is fantastic dude and you know i'm going to throw another connecticut on the list right now too What's that? the McAuliffe connecticut uh, yes. i've been tearing those yes. up i've been tearing yes. those up yes coffee every morning mm. a McAuliffe connecticut sit back and just start the day but you know off what, right and and you know what i love though is like for me the aladino is like creamy and smooth where the McAuliffe connecticut is like a man cigar. <laughs> and you know what I mean by that. Yeah, I know what you're it's like about. it's like, yeah, I'm a Connecticut. But dig this. But uh <laughs> let me show you what I got under my jacket. He like, I'm a Connecticut, but I'm from the hood. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hood. Exactly. <laughs> and so I mean, dudes, I haven't seen a lot of Connecticut's on the list, so I want to throw the both gotcha. of those in gotcha. there. Gotcha. And then oh, here's my boy right here. The Viva La Vida Jester. Uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, it's a great freaking smoke. Can't say nothing about, can't say anything bad about Viva. La Vida. Here's one that old Paul would appreciate. Okay, this is from Jack. Still, the Oliva V Milanio. Yeah, that's Paul's. Dude, that is a great cigar, and especially for me personally, I love that in the Figurado. To me, if I'm going to smoke uh, the Oliva V fig, or Milanio, I love the Figurato. Okay. It's a great. You got ash on your shirt, bro. And you look can, at it. It's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. <laughs> it's beautiful. You just dump that in the ashtray. <laughs> beautiful. But, yeah, that, that's a great smoke. And then here's one. Oh, you know what? There's two left on Jax's list, and I love... One of them. I have not had the other one, so I'm going to say the one he I haven't had before. Okay, it's the Carl Malone. Never had. It. I've seen it, but I, I, I looked in the magazine and I saw it in there. Yeah, you know Carl Malone, yeah. the great basket mail, mailman Malone, <laughs> one of the greatest basketball players of all times. You can't argue that. Yeah, I can. I met him. I don't. I, I didn't say either. You seen him on the basketball court. You're you're talking personal stuff. Yeah. I don't care about personal stuff. <laughs> I mean, I like you <laughs> and personally too. <laughs> if not, I wouldn't be here. I promise you. <laughs> so anyway, Carl Malone. I've seen the cigars. I think he was one of the greatest basketball players. Back in the day, in the nineties, I got when you. basketball was basketball. <laughs> but we're not going to get off on that <laughs> tangent because that's that's one I can go off on. You're not the only one. But anyway, uh, no, I've never had those. But here's the next cigar, and I want to say maybe I'm wrong, but I saw somebody say that the Malone cigars were made by maybe Rojas. Oh. I, I I think I have that wrong. They're made by somebody that's well respected. Educate us. I, Educate I'll, us. I'll, I'll try to find that out yeah. before next week. Gotcha. Last but not least, okay. the swollen cock. Ah! <laughs> you know, the swollen cock is on the list. <laughs> if you have not tried Robert, Robert Caldwell's yes. Lost and Found Swollen yes. Cock, you are missing out. You're missing out, bro. Dude, tell them. <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> bro, it ain't no joke. No. No, sir. No, sir. You talking about a flavor profile, a roller coaster ride. And a beautiful and a, rolled oh, figure ride. You're looking at it, you're like, this looks good. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It looks good, tastes good. It is good. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Great list from both yes. of those guys. Yes. And then if that was 20 total for those two guys, okay. we're at 50. I added the McAuliffe, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. The Aladino, Connecticut. The Aladino, Connecticut. The, uh, Davidoff Oscuro. That's 73. So that is 73. Yes, yeah, so you got 27 left. Do you have any two that you want to add for this week? Not right now. Really? Yeah. Really? For, well, yes, I can. That that you smoking. Oh, oh, the payback. <sighs> 
especially sitting four years, that's a di- that's a dynamite stick, man. Room one on one, that's a dynamite stick. Let me man. tell you something. I am just barely getting into this, <laughs> and it is. <laughs> and what strikes me first and foremost uh-huh. is just the luxury quality of the tobacco. Ah. It's like it's smooth, it's flavorful, it it's just nice. And I think maybe that comes from the aging of four extra years. But I'm a fan, man. I'm a fan. All right, what else you got? What else you got? And looking at what I've been smoking here lately, you may be upset with me. I doubt it. Yeah, you will. Because when I say what it is. But you gave me this stick. Monte Cristo Epic Craft Cure. Let me tell you something. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell on myself. I've even been enjoying the shit out of that stick. If I could run out the door with the headphones on, I would. Dude. <laughs> I'd run screaming. <laughs> Is that a good stick? Dude. I had never had it before. Let me tell you something. And you get, first of all, when you gave, I said, "Oh, he didn't find some money crystals. He don't like he." And then I had to beg you for those that I had, and I was like, "Wait a minute!" He tried to hold on to these, and when I tried the first one, I was like, "Okay, maybe it's something I'm missing." Because you know, you know, you know, yes. I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say to say that I like a Monte Cristo. <laughs> and let say. me tell you something. Let me tell you something all you right. don't know. What's that? I've been tearing that stick up. <laughs> And I have not posted one picture on <laughs> Instagram. You don't want I don't want to humble myself. <laughs> I don't want anybody to know I like Monte Cristo. And, say, and, and have people say Bryant was right. <laughs> dude. Dude, that stick is it's good. It's dynamite, Especially man. in the morning with oh, coffee. I tried it with some matcha coffee. And I sat back. Them two pairing off of each other. Going one route with the Sumatra. And then that, that, that craft cure bringing me back. It was like. Dude, I got to do this more often, Dude, man. I have been super oh, impressed yes, by yes, that stick. Yes, yes. And I, I was, I was just like, <sighs> eh, it'll probably be okay. <laughs> and then after I smoked one, I was like, eh, it was pretty good. Now I'm on like number eight, and I'm like, I love this stick, <laughs> but I'm not telling anybody. I'm not telling anybody <laughs> because I don't smoke Monte Cristo, and I don't want people to know I smoke. I don't. Monte yeah, <laughs> I well, people can't know because I don't. I, I don't, don't smoke you Monte didn't Cristo. Hear this. <laughs> it's Bryant. <laughs> I was impressed, dude. Come I, on. I'm, I'm all. I, come I'm on. definitely on board with putting come that on, on the list. So now we have seventy five. All right, seventy five. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's hey. top one hundred, hey. but. Let's talk just a minute about the preseason Cowboy Steeler game that the Cowboys <laughs> lost. And right after everybody said they're eliminated from the playoffs. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> One is, thing I have to say, let me say this. And first that of all, I didn't watch the whole game. I watched up until the fourth quarter. But wow. That that linebacker. Parsons. You, this dude is real. Okay. I didn't get to see enough his of him first, play. His first play, the first tackle. I, th- I think it was the first tackle. He got a turnover. Dude is for real. I didn't see the first drive. He caught with a, Pittsburgh. He caught a D, a, a running, I'm not a running back, a wide receiver running down the field. He had a nice little angle, but when you look at it from the camera again, he readjusted that angle, that angle. Dude has speed, man. He ran a 4-4. And it's written in a 4-3. 4-3. And it's As real. As a linebacker. And it's real. Yeah. It's real. I was like, oh, man, this dude's going to be, he's going to be scary. Well, let me tell you what I saw on TikTok today. Now, and and I got another video for you that we're going to play on the uh, after After show show. for the Patreons. Because it was fucking perfect for you. (laughs) It was perfect. It was. Oh, (laughs) excuse me. I apologize for the F-bomb. I'll try to bleep that out. Anyway, (laughs) that just slipped. Slipped right on out. (laughs) But uh, no, uh, there was a guy on TikTok and he was like, okay, here we go. Here's the Cowboy yeah. fans. And here's all the bull that we got to listen to the Cowboy fans is, oh, it was preseason. Yeah. Oh, we didn't start our starters. Yeah. Oh, we, preseason doesn't count. Yeah. And I was like, well, it doesn't. I mean. I understand what you're saying. I mean, dude. But. Preseason doesn't count. The Kool-Aid drinkers, 
take every game that they play. They go to the practices that they're having now, yeah. and they film and put out the pra- The Kool-Aid drinkers take everything the Cowboys do. Now, there serious. are some major – no, I trust me. I follow some Cowboy YouTubers, uh-huh. and even one of them today said, I don't normally promote Cowboy propaganda, <laughs> but I'm going to with uh, C.D. Lamb. Yeah. And he was like, see, I'm even doing it myself Myself, yeah, because that's how easy it is to get sucked into the Kool-Aid of the Cowboys. (laughs) I don't. I don't get sucked in because it's the Cowboys. Just hold on. You know what? (laughs) Just for the fact that they have a star on the side of their helmet tells you all you need to know. I'm going to leave that alone. 1995 was the last last time time. we've been to the Super Bowl. We won it, but that's how long it's been. Mm -hmm. 26 years. Long time. That's older than than both of your children. Yes. (laughs) And older than than especially the one I got that that loves the Cowboys. I said, dude, you you weren't even alive the last time they went to the Super Bowl. I don't even know how you could be a fan. And here's the thing that gets me. I'm a 49ers fan. I'm not a Kool-Aid drinker, but I I love the 49ers. I got a son that's a Packers fan and one that's a Cowboys fan. (laughs) I'm like, where did I go wrong? Hey, well, speaking of that, (laughs) though. Where did I go wrong? What in the hell is going on in Green Bay with the quarterback? Hey, dude, showing them that. Is it's, he is he the, gonna play? He's gonna play, but it's the, it's 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 the culture now. It's me, it's me, 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 and it's not about the team. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he is a snot nosed spoiled <laughs> brat. And no, now he's good. I'll be the first one to say he's good. He's got talent. He's confident. Yeah. He's more confident than any other quarterback I've ever seen yeah. play the game. To the point cocky. where he's cocky. Yep. Now, I have always said that if you back up your cockiness, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. But with him, I do because I don't like him. <laughs> you still don't like him. I don't I just, like I just him. don't like you. <laughs> I never liked you. I don't you. care that you threw a 100-yard pass in the air. You know what? The, he, I've there. seen him take down the Cowboys with a minute and 36 seconds yeah. left on the clock. Yeah. So I know how cocky he can be, and he – he earned it, but I still don't like still it. Still don't like him. Got you, bro. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Don't miss next week's show when we wrap up our top 100 must-try cigars. 25 left. And we want to say thank you to our Patreon yes. members. You guys keep the show going every thank week. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank we have a, a great team, the Light em Up crew. Yes, sir. And we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to do the after show. So until next time, keep smoking. Keep smoking.